Hello everyone, welcome. I am Teacher Sherwin. In this video, we are going to learn the different qualitative sampling techniques. Researchers doing a qualitative study must carefully select samples from the population. Even it is possible, sometimes it is not necessary to obtain your desired data from all individuals from a population in order to get a reliable and valid research findings. Unlike quantitative research that uses probability sampling techniques, qualitative research employs non-probability sampling in selecting the participants to be part of the study. Let us first define what is non-probability sampling. In a non-probability sampling, the samples, or individuals, are selected in a non-random criteria. Meaning, not every individual has a chance to be part in the study. This type of sampling technique is often used in exploratory and qualitative research. In qualitative research, a relatively lesser number of sample is selected as compared to doing quantitative research where it follows a formula to compute the desired sample size. The study's research objectives and the characteristics of the study population will help determine the researcher's choice of participants and how many participants should be included in the study. This video will discuss the four common types of qualitative sampling techniques that include convenience sampling, purposive sampling, snowball sampling, and quota sampling. First is the convenience sampling. This type of sampling technique involves selecting participants for your research who are available or convenient for study. Samples are clearly selected in a non-random fashion, because not all people in the population have an equal chance of being selected. This is applicable if the researcher does not know the location of the participants. He or she just recruit the participants who are readily available during the time of interview. This is also known as accidental sampling or haphazard sampling. Clearly, a researcher simply collects data from those people or other relevant elements to which he or she has the most convenient access. Second is purposive sampling. This is considered to be one of the most common sampling techniques. Groups participants according to pre-selected criteria relevant to a particular research question. In purposive sampling, a clear criteria and rationale for inclusion must be established. It is emphasized that this sampling technique involves identification and selection of individuals or groups of individuals that are knowledgeable or experienced on the research interest or phenomenon. Third is snowball sampling. It is also known as chain referral sampling or friend-to-friend -friend sampling. Sometimes snowball sampling is considered to be a type of purpose of sampling. In this sampling technique, the participants, or the informants of the study with whom contact has already been made, use their social networks to refer the researcher to other people who could potentially participate in or contribute to the study. This is often used to find and recruit the hidden samples that are not easily accessible to researchers using the other sampling strategies. Fourth is the quota sampling. Similar with snowball sampling, it is sometimes considered a type of purposive sampling. In quota sampling, subgroups are created based on each category and the researcher decides how many people to include from each subgroup and collects data from that number for each subgroup. Let us remember the four sampling techniques with these descriptions. In convenience sampling, the researcher gathers the data from the participants that happens to be in his or her convenience for purposive. 
the researcher seeks out elements that meet the specified criteria or rationale for inclusion. For Snowball, the researcher relies on participant referrals to recruit new participants. And for Quota, the researcher selects participants from a specific subgroup in a non-random criterion. In this video, we learned the different qualitative sampling techniques.